Hello, Christ Covenant family. It's good to be with you and to be able to continue in this series of Fireside Devotionals. I hope that you've been encouraged over these last few weeks as we've been able to look together to God's Word for encouragement in a difficult time. You know, Rachel and I were actually supposed to be taking a trip, leaving tomorrow, actually, for celebrating her birthday and our 15th anniversary. Unfortunately, like many of you, we've had to cancel those plans. Admittedly, that's a a smaller loss in a time of significant losses among our community and our country. But it is significant, isn't it, when we've had things on our calendars, things that we've perhaps planned for and looked forward to, things that we've maybe worked hard towards and been waiting to share with others, have those things taken away. I know that for myself, something I really long to see on my calendar again is gathering together for corporate worship, to be physically together to worship the Lord. I know that we're all thankful for the technology that's made worshiping together from a distance possible, but we do long, don't we, to be together again soon, to worship with one another in one another's presence. I've thought a number of times in the last few days about Psalm 122, verse 1. Perhaps you have as well. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Of course, when you look at that psalm, you notice there there's a title, a song of ascents which points us back to the original context of these psalms. There's actually quite a few of them, from Psalm 120 all the way to 134 that begin with this title. There's a number of different understandings for the potential intended uses of these psalms, but a common and most likely one is that these were a collection of psalms to be used to be sung by the Israelites as they traveled up to Jerusalem for particularly the feast days on their calendar, for worship, to gather together together in the city of God, to feast and fellowship together, to worship God. So in that way, they were sort of a pilgrim psalm for pilgrimage up to Jerusalem. You see that kind of trajectory actually reflected in the first three of these psalms, 120 through 122, perhaps composed for different reasons, but reflecting that very trajectory. Psalm 20, 120, laments being in a place of distress, living away from God's house in a difficult place, among difficult people. Psalm 121 is a statement of trust and of confidence, a looking to God for protection. It expands to include every aspect of life, but there's language there that certainly points towards an arduous and perhaps even dangerous journey, like many would have undertaken to head to Jerusalem for worship. And Psalm 122 then is possibly a psalm of arrival, a meditation for arriving at the gates of that holy city. Derek Kidner puts it this way, the trials of an expatriate in Psalm 120 and the hazards of travel in 121 are eclipsed now by the joy which had first drawn the pilgrim on his journey. There is a miniature of this gladness in any meeting for true worship, but here the sight of the Lord's house is the climax of a longer and stiffer pilgrimage. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet have been standing within your gates. O Jerusalem. It is a reflection upon the joy of the invitation to join in that pilgrim band, to get up and to go, to travel to the Lord's house with friends, even though the journey might be difficult with the expectation of worship and feasting and fellowship upon arrival. And it's an exclamation of the joy of that arrival, of finally being there, of being one among that number with God in God's place among God's people. We can only imagine that the joy of all this was made only sweeter by the disappointments from which and the difficulties through which those pilgrims had come to get there. And so as I think about this and and I think about us gathering for worship together again, I imagine that one thing the Lord is doing in these difficult days is renewing and deepening an appreciation for that weekly gathering together for worship. I know that's the case with me, and I'm sure it is for many of you as well. Of course, even these weekly gatherings in our own context now are themselves a pointer ahead to a future assembly, a future gathering together that's still ahead. And so in that sense, Psalm 122 has a forward-looking nature to it. That is, it's a pilgrim song that points to our ultimate pilgrim hope, towards the final gathering of God's people around the glory of the Lord, when our pilgrimage is finally done and our feet are standing within the gates of that new Jerusalem. You know, as we turn to 
the New Testament, the Apostle John gives us a glimpse of what that city might look like as it comes into view. In Revelation 21 and 22, he says, Then came one of the seven angels and spoke to me, saying, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great high mountain. And he showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, having the glory of God, its radiance, like a most rare jewel, like a jasper, clear as crystal. It had a great high wall with 12 gates. No longer will there be anything accursed, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads, and night will be no more. They will need no light or lamp of sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. You know, we don't know when we'll be able to gather physically together again for worship, but we do know that this day of gathering and worship is certainly coming, and that ought to be of great encouragement to us. And as for the trials, even the trials that we encounter along the way, they have their purpose for us as well. In God's redeeming hands, James says that we should count it all joy whenever we encounter trials of various kinds because we know that the testing of our faith produces steadfastness. Another way to translate that word steadfastness is endurance. An endurance that James would say is fueled increasingly by a single-minded hope. You know, endurance implies going somewhere, doesn't it? Most often somewhere we would think that's far off and perhaps hard to get to, something like a pilgrimage. And so might God be using this season, might God use this season of hard providence not only to deepen our desire for corporate worship now, but also to intensify and deepen our longing for the day when we will gather together, arriving at that new Jerusalem and our feet standing within those gates. And let's keep fanning into flame our pilgrim hope by using these pilgrim songs that God in his grace has given to us. You know, one pilgrim song that I love to sing, a newer pilgrim song that I love to sing when we are together for worship is We Will Feast in the House of Zion. It's a song that we often sing around the Lord's table for the Lord's Supper, but that points us ahead towards a greater feast still to come. It's a feast to which by God's grace in Christ alone we've been invited and a feast that by God's grace, we will most certainly arrive to enjoy. I can't wait to sing that song together with you again. But until that day, may these words from that song serve as an encouragement to us. In the dark of night, before the dawn, my soul be not afraid. For the promised morning, oh, how long, oh, God of Jacob, be my strength. We will feast in the house of Zion. We will sing with our hearts restored. He has done great things, we will say together. We will feast and weep no more. Would you pray with me? Father, these times are hard, and many of us are weary. Our trials, they don't feel like joy, but we can count them as such when you use them to purify this pilgrim hope within us. And we thank you today that this hope is not in vain. And while we pray that in your mercy, this current trial might quickly pass, Lord, we know that others would surely follow as long as our pilgrimage continues. And so we pray, Father, that you would see us safely through, that you would sustain us, that you would keep our feet from stumbling, and that you would bring us to that feast which we will enjoy with our hearts restored and singing your praises forevermore. For we ask it all in Jesus' name, amen.